Joining me now is Dan Balls, chief correspondent at The Washington Post, who focused on this issue in his column, and former Obama White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs, and Vittorio De Francesco Soto, assistant dean at the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas at Austin. Dan, talk to me about your column. It was a really gripping analysis of what happened and how it's been happening for decades to Democrats. In rural America. That's the really interesting thing, Andrea. This, this is not a new problem. It's as right. though Democrats go through an election and, you know, every time they look at the results, they wake up and say, oh, we have a problem with rural America. Uh, this is now an endemic problem. It started long before Donald Trump, but it has gotten worse as a result of his presidency. And as we saw in Virginia last week, uh, Glenn Youngkin, the now governor elect, rolled up margins and turnout that exceeded, in some places, those of Donald Trump uh, just a year ago. And so um, th this is a problem that, that bedevils the party because it puts aspects of their coalition at war with one another or potentially at war with one another. And I think that's one reason Democrats have struggled to figure out what they can do to improve their standing in rural America while continuing to hold on to the coalition that they have in urban and suburban America. Is that an insoluble problem, or are they just in different worlds? Well, so far it has been insoluble. And I think that um, maybe as a result of what we've seen in this most recent election, there will be a greater effort to try to harmonize this. But I think that there are some Democrats who say we're never going to be able to win rural America or even substantially increase our numbers. Uh, we need to concentrate where we have the best opportunities, and that's in urban America and suburban America. Um, but one of the problems that that uh, results in is that it is more and more difficult to win certain states that they win the presidency and to maintain or gain in state legislatures where in a lot of these states, even if they're winning them presidentially, they're losing them um, in, the, in the legislature. And so um, it, it, it is a it is an issue of how you uh, talk to people in rural America, but more importantly, what you listen for from people in rural America. And there is a cultural divide between kind of the elite part of the Democratic Party and the rural voters that they're trying to get. Robert Gibbs, you've seen this before, and you've also worked with candidates who have managed to bridge that divide. Yeah, and I, look, I think Dan is right. I mean, there's some real differences that push and pull in this, and it takes states like Ohio and Iowa and makes them harder for Democrats to win in. But I think Democrats, if they're going to be successful, We'll have to put some of this argument aside between urban, suburban versus rural. And, and to pick up a, on a point in Dan's column, we don't have to get a majority of the rural vote. We don't have to win the rural vote. It's about being present. And we have good examples of this. Look, just in Virginia in 2020, Mark Warner got 26 percent of the rural vote, as well as doing well in urban centers and in suburban centers. Now, to give Senator Warner credit, this isn't something that he started sometime in 2020. He's been present in rural America and in southwest Virginia for years and years when he ran against John Warner, when he ran for governor. And so I think a big part of this is being present and having a forceful economic message. Infrastructure would be a great place for Democrats to start. And, Victoria, if you just look at our friends in First Read pointing out that even in New Jersey, where there were no exit polls, that uh, Cittarelli did so well in the rural areas that, that he came close. And as the numbers show, if you're losing uh, 36 to, you know, 36 percent of the voters in Virginia went for Youngkin, 76 percent to 24 percent without a college degree, you know, the numbers are just so dramatic. There was no exit poll in New Jersey, but we see the same trend. And if you're losing 36 percent of all voters by 76 to 24, you have to win 65 percent of all other voters just to get to 50 plus one. That's what makes it so tough. So, Andrew, and exactly. And we think about different identities in, in terms of women, the young, the older voters, Latinos, African-American voters. Mm -hmm. We also really need to pay as much attention to the identity of the rural voter. What is it that they care about economically? Where do we meet them economically? Where do we also meet them emotionally? Because think of what the GOP has done so well. They've connected with them emotionally. They make them feel a sense of pride rather than feeling like 
they just don't get it. They should do what is right and stop complaining. So there's also that emotional connect. And to highlight on what Robert said, it's about the investment, the return on investment. Like with other groups, a group that I know well and that I study Latinos, you can't just show up a couple of weeks before an election and expect to get that group's support. You need to be there in the long term. You need to connect with them, engage with them, listen to them, not just tell them what they should do and what is good for them, but be there consistently. And that's how you win the vote. And that's how you start to make inroads. Listening is so important, Jeff Victoria. Thank you so much, Robert Gibbs and Dan Balls.